For the trapezoidal rule, we basically approach a Riemann sum and say rather than picking the left side or the right side to define the height, why don't we pick both? And if we do that, we won't end up with rectangles, but we can draw trapezoids. And that's what this picture here shows, that for each sub-interval, we pick the height on the left side and the height on the right side based on the function value at each of those points. And then we draw a straight line between them. So we're basically approximating a curve using straight line segments. And you can even tell from a rough picture like this that we can get pretty close if the function is fairly smooth. And as long as there's not strange things happening, the trapezoidal rule can give very good approximations. The only complication is we have to know how to calculate the area of a trapezoid, but it turns out that's relatively straightforward as well. So over on the right, we have a generic trapezoid, and let's say the left side is at x sub k, and the right side is at x sub k plus one. So let's call this height of the left side h1, and the height of the right side h2. We have two height values, so we have to figure out how to calculate the area with two different height values. But it turns out this is simpler than it appears because you can imagine flattening out the top of the trapezoid and moving, leveling this side down and leveling this side up. And if you do that and you meet right in the middle, you wind up having a rectangle with a horizontal top to it. And as long as you move them at the same time, you don't actually change the area of the trapezoid. So you can level it out and imagine meeting halfway in the middle. So there's a rectangle with a height halfway between H1 and H2 that has the same area as this trapezoid. And as long as you recognize that and can follow that geometric logic, the formula for it really is relatively simple. We just find the average height halfway between the left and the right, and then multiply that by the width delta x. So this left height would be the function evaluated at x sub k. The right one would be the function evaluated at x sub k plus 1. And then the area for the trapezoid basically equals the average height times the width. So in this case it would be the average of these two height values times delta x. And notice that it looks somewhat similar to the midpoint formula. In the midpoint we took the average of the two x values and evaluated the function once. Here we evaluate the function first at the two points and then find the average. So there's really a, a quite a similarity between them, but you just have to keep straight which one's which. And having a picture of a trapezoid in mind can be helpful just in keeping things straight on that front. So in this case, the integral from a to b if we divide it into n subintervals, can be approximated as the sum from k equals 1 to n of the average function value between x sub k and x sub k plus 1 times delta x. And in the textbook you may see a slightly different version of this. They separate off the first and last values and then combine the ones in between. Because for instance, x sub two is going to be evaluated twice, once for the first rectangle and once for the second, as the right and left endpoints respectively. And so you can rewrite this formula differently by combining those middle points. But I'll write it this way just to keep it looking somewhat like the midpoint rule and it keeps things a little bit more consistent. So we're going to do the same example we did with the midpoint rule. We're going to approximate a known integral and we'll see how well this one performs 
by finding the absolute and relative errors as well. So we're going to approximate the integral from 2 to 4 of x squared. And we're going to be using the trapezoidal rule. with n equals 4. Again, on the homework you may see something like t of 4 just as a notation to tell you to use the trapezoidal rule with n equals 4. So as we did before, we'll think about this interval from 2 to 4 being divided into four segments. So we'll divide it in half and then in half again And now for each segment, we'll think about drawing a trapezoid and finding the average of the heights on the left and right side. So for the first trapezoid, we will square 2 and then square 2.5 and take the average of them. So halfway between 4 and 6.25 is 5.125 and then when we divide that by 2 we get 2.5625 so the area is going to be that average height times the width, 0 0.5, which comes out to 1.28125. And I won't fill this out for all the others because it's very much the same. We're simply finding the average height, multiplying that by the width, and that gives us the area of the trapezoid. So in total, this integral is approximately equal to 5.1225 value for the first trapezoid, which we actually worked out, plus the same thing for the next one, and then for the other two as well. So for each one, we're just plugging in the two endpoints left and right to the function. In this case, it's x squared, so we're squaring each of them. And then taking the average of those two answers and multiplying by the width delta x. Now you'll notice here that some of these are repeated, and that's why the textbook will combine things. So for instance, we have 2.5 squared over 2 here and here. So if you calculate 2.5 squared, you can combine these two and only do it once. The same thing with 3 squared and 3.5 squared. So that's why the textbook combines and writes a slightly more complicated looking formula because it simplifies the calculation a little bit. But if you write it out this way, you can observe that and you can save yourself some time. So you can calculate 2 squared over 2 plus 2.5 squared plus 3 squared plus 3.5 squared and that'll take care of all of these duplicates and then plus 4 squared over 2. And if it helps you can do all of that combined and then multiply by 0.5 at the end in a sense factoring out 0 0.5. So there are ways that you can shortcut the actual calculations a little bit since they're a bit tedious but they're all relatively simple arithmetic that you're doing here. At the end of all this, this works out to 18.75. That's our approximate value for the integral of x squared from 2 to 4. And remember that the exact value we found earlier was 56 over 3. So the absolute error is this approximate value minus 56 over 3, and then we take the absolute value, which works out to about 0.08. 
And again, to make that more clear, we can write the relative error as the absolute error divided by the exact answer. Again, using absolute values to leave off any negative signs. So that works out to about 0 0.00446 or about 0.446%. Again, a very small error. Anything under 1 or 2% is very good. And notice that the error is a little bit higher than it was with the midpoint rule. It really depends on what function you're using as to which one will give you a better approximation. But because of the way x squared is constructed, the midpoint rule actually gives a better approximation, even though it's a simpler rule because the overestimates and underestimates balance each other out pretty evenly uh, with the midpoint rule versus the trapezoidal rule, the straight line approximation ends up overestimating consistently. And you can play around with different functions to see which one gives you a better approximation in different cases. But these two rules are the fundamental ones. There are other more complicated extensions of these or variations of these there are ways that you can pick the points instead of evenly spacing them. You can space them differently depending on what function you're working with. You can even pick your points randomly. There are adaptive methods that are more complicated that will pick the points and then re-pick them to make the approximation better. Um, there are all sorts of more involved ways out there, but these are sort of the foundation and most of the software packages out there will have a method to use one of these as well as the more complicated ones. So MATLAB, for instance, has a built-in trapezoidal integrator and uh, then there are more complicated ones that it also uses as well. But these give you a nice foundation at least to start thinking about numerical integration and in principle it's relatively simple. The tedious part is doing these calculations over and over again for many different sub intervals and that's why we generally use software packages to do this because they can carry out the arithmetic for us without us having to stop and do that in slow detail. So that wraps up our discussion of numerical integration relatively short just these two methods the midpoint rule and the trapezoidal rule are all we need for now.